Hey, Business Building Warrior, welcome back to Silent Sales Machine Radio, the podcast that features real stories from real people who are building businesses using the internet creatively with an emphasis on our favorite strategy for the past six plus seven years or so called replens. That's helping Amazon fill its shelves and its 150 plus warehouses around the United States with the products that people are buying all day, every day. There's huge opportunity there once you know how to spot the test-worthy products that you can sell against. And many, many people, you've heard 200 plus, excuse me, you've heard hundreds of interviews, way more than 200, probably more like 600 interviews with our students on this show. And you can also see 2,000 posts in our free Facebook group at silentgym.com. There's links to everything, basically from that one website. You can join our free Facebook group and see 2,000 posts of people saying, hey, this works. Wow, proof of concept. Or, hey, just had my first $30,000 a month, just had my first $50,000 a month. You'll see incredible, great stories from real people who started off, in many cases, just listening to this podcast. So we're glad you've joined us today. We want to encourage you. We want to equip you for success, tell you what really works, the strategies that we're teaching inside of our training all day, every day. And today, you're going to meet a couple students who were actually on the interview, we interviewed them on the show. It's been about four years ago. We don't remember the exact podcast episode. We'll try to stick it in the show notes for you. And their business was exploding at the time. And then it cooled off a little bit and they struggled for a while. And now they're back to a really good place and they're doing so well. And they represent the values of our community so well that we've asked them to come on and be coaches on our team as well. So you're going to get to meet Kip and Wendy Sykes here in just a moment. We're going to bring them on. But before I do, I'm going to give you a couple of announcements. These are important, timely announcements. And this is your reminder. Hey, if you listen to our podcast and you check, you're checking out maybe our new episodes, what you need to do is make sure the new ones are the first thing you listen to, not the old ones. Sometimes people come into our community and they start with episode number one. And that's great. And we love all of our old episodes as we approach number 800. But there's timely announcements that you need to pay attention to, such as one I'm going to share with you right now, and that is our upcoming conference. So listen to the latest episodes before you listen to the old ones, because we've just launched our scholarship program for our live event coming up May 23rd through 25th of 2024 in Orlando, Florida. Hundreds of people have already registered. It's going to be a phenomenal event. We've got some very generous sponsors this year who have created a pool of funds that we're going to use to make sure that you can come at no charge. If you qualify, you just have to fill out a short application and we'll get back to you. And we want to bless as many people as we possibly can with completely free admission to the event this year. Now that hundreds of people have registered, planning to attend, the hotel's booking up. It's a beautiful resort. Get all the details, including details on our scholarship program at this website. It's three words theprovenconference.com is the website. Get there, check it out. And we'd love to see you in Orlando. Wendy and Kip, our guests today, will be there as well. So it's a chance for you to meet many of the great guests that you've heard on this show. The 40 breakout sessions at our event are going to be taught by real people, real students who are building real businesses, coaches from our community, students who are deploying the strategies we teach here. That's the presenters at this event. So do not miss it three very special days coming up in Florida in May. The next announcement I want to give you has to do with a free book that you can get. If you're new around here, I'm going to make this super quick. So rewind it if you need to, but write down this phone number, 507-800-0090. In the U.S. or Canada, use that phone number, text the word free to that number, and you'll get a free copy of my latest book, Silent Sales Machine. It's been updated 11 times. I'm very proud of how it turned out this time. I'd love to get it into your hands completely free. If you can't use that phone number, email our support team. There's a link at silentgym.com and they will get you a free digital copy sent to you by email. Let's get into today's episode. You are going to hear, like I mentioned, the story of some now great coaches on our team who've just come on board. They built a beautiful business. They struggled for a while. They've done it together. They relied on the community. They talk a lot about our coaching program because they were coaching students. They talk a lot about the experiences they had at a workshop that we hosted not too long ago. They did such a great job. I was there. If you want more details on our next upcoming workshop, by the way, 
you can go to provenamazoncourse.com slash 100. And that's our next workshop. Get the details on that event. As you hear them talking about it, you'll hear how much they benefited from that during our episode today. All right, let's get over and meet our guests. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's truly an honor that you gave us some of your valuable time today. I hope to reward you with some great specific tips and insights and encouragement today with Kip and Wendy. Enjoy this. So Kip and Wendy, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. Good to see you. Good, Good to, to be see here. You. Yeah. Thanks. Great to Thanks have for you having back. Us. It's been four years. We were talking about before we hit record. That's pretty crazy. Time flies. But uh, let's get into your story. Let's update everyone on kind of how you guys got started and, and get into it. Okay. We started six years ago. And um, I was running a business out of my home, floral design and event coordinating. And Kip was in and out of a couple of traditional jobs that really stunk. (laughs) Um, The jobs weren't so bad. It was the employers. And at the stage in life we were at, you know, there's no amount of money that makes that kind of job worth it. And so we determined we needed to find a way to keep them home um, or work from home. We're both entrepreneurial minded. And he saw an ad for a training of a different company on Facebook uh, about Amazon and something sparked. He was never interested in e- e-commerce before, but something sparked and it was worth it to him to go to this um, training. And one thing led to another, the company that we signed up with, it was similar to you, but not a little different mindset, but it was coaching and different training aspects. We poured a ton of money into it. And um, that company ended up getting investigated by the Federal Trade Commission and getting shut down. But fortunately, for our sake, because of the dynamics of it, we were able to get a lot of our money back. And so, but at that point, we were a year, maybe a year or so into it, maybe not quite a year. And we felt like we had to kind of figure it out on our own from that point forward. So we did the next two years, we kind of muddled our way through um, learning the platform and selling on Amazon. We did fairly well considering. Then we remembered that a friend of ours prior to starting had mentioned your group and suggested the Facebook group. So I researched that a little bit and got into the group, but really didn't do anything with it. We were so used to kind of doing things on our own. We, we put it off for a little while, but then we were kind of at a stalemate. We weren't really growing. Um, we weren't doing anything different. And I said, you know, it's time to learn something new. Let's check this group out. And that was just before COVID hit in 2020. Okay. We had um, we had moved from California to Idaho and we were running the business out of our home. And COVID, of course, exploded um, online sales and things were uh, crazy. And um, that was when we did our first podcast after that explosion. And sorry, where was I going? <laughs> well, great. we got involved, I think, went. initially in learning retail arbitrage. And we weren't doing it right. And once we got into this group and learned from Jimmy some new ways to to do that from listening to one of his one of your broadcasts, um, it really changed everything that we did and how we approached things. And so we went into that year and just exploded because we were approaching the we, system correctly. Yeah, we were focusing on replens. That you know that was a whole new concept. And then obviously sourcing. The original podcast was stop scanning barcodes. Because what we learned was the reverse sourcing and, you know, it opened up a whole new world to us as far as the possibilities of, of new ASINs and, and new products. And yeah, the replans model definitely was, and is still a bit, you know, our, our biggest part of our business for sure. What strategy were you using before the other company you said that you ended up just getting most of your money back? Was it arbitrage type strategies or was that private label or? Private label. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, get, I, I assumed so, but didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. We put out some good money um, to for a new product that we were going to try and get developed. And and uh, that didn't go too well with that particular yeah. process. We had no idea what we were doing and it, it didn't right. go very well. We've heard that story so many times and, and I won't belabor the point, but 95% yeah. of all new sellers who go down that road end up failing and just losing a lot of money in some cases. Yeah multiple tens of thousands of dollars. And it, it's sad um, for our industry. It's sad. A lot of people leave burnout and confused and frustrated and never come back because they right. went through that same experience. I mean, I, I'm estimating tens of thousands, if not hundred thousands of plus, you know, people have had that experience. Unfortunately, sure. 
with Amazon. So I call our community a burn unit sometimes for people who have just <laughs> been completely, you know, deflated by that whole model. Uh, and Chris Beam came up with the pants loss model, PL, pants loss. That was one of the coaches on our team. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is just such a lower risk way, you know, but it still work. And you guys had a huge 2020, put some great numbers in the bank. We interviewed you. Things were going great. But I know that's not the whole story. So, you know, keep it, keep us going. Keep filling in the timeline. And any lessons you want to share as you go through this as well, you know, anything that that you learned along the way besides just business lessons. You know, I know you guys are two trusted, respected leaders in the community now. And, and so fill us in I and mean, take us on this journey. Yeah. Um, 21 and 22, you know, we still, we rode the coattails of, of COVID and, and the increased online shopping and we're doing really well. And we had a coach, we got a coach shortly after our first podcast. And, um, we thought at the time, because we thought we had nailed down RA and replens that we were ready to jump into, um, either wholesale or private label. So we started with that, with coaching. And after the first session or two, we realized, we're, yeah, this isn't quite the direction we're we're feeling led, and so we switched coaches, and um, yeah, got a wonderful coach that we still have a great relationship with and and love dearly, and that just encouraged us along the way. You know, what we were doing was okay; it was enough for the time, and we just needed to build on that. And then fast forward to the conference in 2022, that's where we went into one of the breakout sessions about masterminds. And didn't know what to expect, but the key phrase that I remember you saying in that session was e-commerce business owners tend to isolate. Mm. And I had never thought of it that way because we have each other. We've been building this together, mm -hmm. but we realized besides the once a year conference that we were going to, we really weren't connecting with people other than our coach. Yeah. And so we took the initiative, you know, we weren't asked to be in a mastermind, but we took the initiative and a couple of other sellers that we had met at the previous conference that we had connected with were like, yeah, we really want to get into a mastermind, but we're not sure how to start it. They're like, oh, we were thinking the same thing. And so we're like, let's do it. And so going together, it started out, I think uh, four of us, five of us, and it's been a year and a half. And one of the guys has dropped off. He's, he's gone a different direction, but we, you know, we, at least once a month, we still connect more often if we can. And that has been a tremendous blessing to us, both professionally and personally, you know, and, and we practice, we try to practice the model of this is not just about our business. How are you doing? How's your wife? How are your kids? You know, we, we've tried to connect on a personal level and that's, that's been really sweet. I think yeah. for us. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of business is improved relationships it really is. I mean, the, the money is, a, is, is, a result of doing it right, but the relationships yeah. are the true bonus. And just, I, I look at the number of people that I've been able to build great relationships with that never would have happened without business, without e-commerce. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love what you pointed out, Wendy, about how we tend to isolate as e-commerce business owners. It, it appeals to the introvert and it gives us even more excuses to kind of say, and even what you pointed out, just because you're doing it with your spouse, you can still isolate <laughs> from, right. you know, it's kind of like people say, well, you know, we don't really belong to any church or Bible study or any fellowship group of any kind, you know, we've got our family like, wow, well, that's not quite what's meant by, you know, accountability and discipleship. Community. And, you know, you need a group of other people that's a little uncomfortable to rub shoulders with, but you're doing it together. Mm -hmm. By design, we need that. And the people who thrive intentionally pursue that. So I, I love your observations on that. Hopefully that encourages someone today to, to jump in there and, and coming to our live events is a great way to do it. You know, maybe we can talk more about that in a minute. I don't want to jump the ship to that point, but so keep the story going wherever you guys would like to go. And, and Kip, anything that comes to mind so far with what's been said that you want to add or are we, we doing good so far? Yeah. So after that conference, there's other things that um, seminars and on online arbitrage and and other programs that were there that we we thought okay we're gonna we're gonna pursue all these different things and try and, and really expand what we're doing so over the next few months we had some real struggles learning some of the processes we're not the best when it comes to some of the, um, the tech, technical technology. technology you know those types of things and and so 
we we did the best we could and tried to learn what we could and but we we ended up doing some struggling we we let go of some of the processes that we had been doing that would made us made us successful because we were trying something different and it yeah just we we just really struggled with that so we went it it took us to a point where some of our finances started kind of dipping so we didn't have some of the finances to put into product and other things that we were that we had before and so we went through about four or five months of some real struggles financially because we tried something different that just kind of took us in a in a direction that was a real struggle. Mm-hmm. I think instead of keeping the business we had going and then on the side learning this new thing, we put so much time and energy into the new shiny object, mm-hmm. hearing all the other success stories that you know we lost focus of what we were doing, and so. We kind we kind of crashed and burned. <laughs> yeah, that's um, not such a common thing, though. It's such a common thing that the boring gets neglected. The, mm. the boring system that's producing results gets neglected and replaced by the new exciting thing. And then you look over your shoulder, and the boring things, you know, running on life support. And I've had a good number of conversations with coaching students from our community and other leaders and such, where that exact same ha- thing happened. Just kind of got boring and monotonous. We thought, oh, we can go bigger and better, do something else instead of scaling what we know is working. Uh, and that little window of distraction ended up causing some some serious issues. Uh, it's human nature. Uh, yeah. But that's why we're always saying build systems. You know, multiple income streams isn't about bouncing from thing to thing to thing. It's building systems, making sure they're bolted down, running smoothly. Good people are in charge of them. A virtual assistant. You know, you're still managing it. Uh, you're still overseeing it, but. Good people are in charge of making sure the basic things are happening before you allow your attention to go somewhere else. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the key to multiple income streams. I've had to manage that my whole career. I mean, I've been doing that for twenty four years at this point, so I, I I've seen it, and I know in my own business it happens. If I ignore something too long because I'm just not interested, I look back over my shoulder and man, it's it's not doing real well right now. <laughs> I got to get myself mm-hmm. back in there a little bit, right? Um, but yeah, I appreciate your transparency on that. Yeah. I think another um, part of the transition from a you know successful 21 and 22 into into 23 was we lost you know we had a, a part time assistant live assistant who came into our office and and helped a couple of days a week and she had another another baby and after two you know just decided it was too much of a juggle um, decided to stay home and pursue other options and you know we didn't go out and replace her right away. And so we were back to just the two of us. And for me, I think I saw the the dip in the fact that we were trying to manage everything, prepping, shipping, shopping, you know, yeah. the business. And so in the midst of that, in the midst of 23, you know, our account health suffered. Some of the leads we were getting, the IP complaints were coming in faster than we could uh, remedy them. It, it just seemed like a dark cloud was over us for that period of time. and and. We weren't sure how to, you know, get get out of it, but we muscled our way through it. We worked with our coach, our mastermind group, and fortunately, we had some help financially um, to get through Q4 um, as far as investments. And yeah, had a great Q4. We focused a lot more on our Walmart. We started Walmart in uh, September of 22, but that was really more. It was a it was a backup plan. It was hey, at least open your account in case something happens to your Amazon account. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of our dumping ground. It was where we dumped our death pile um, from Amazon returns and sure. things that weren't selling on Amazon. And go ahead. No, I just said, sure. I, I, that totally makes sense. So, and we yeah. encourage it to this day, you know, again, yeah. having a good eBay account, a Walmart account, putting a trickle of activity through it. It makes sense. You know, like yeah. you said, backup, right? Yeah. Well, slowly through the summer, we started pushing more and more inventory into Walmart. And then by September, October, we looked at our reports and went, whoa, we just did $10,000 a month on Walmart. <laughs> yeah. And, and so while we were so focused on our, on the lack of sales on Amazon, we realized, okay, we were ramping up Walmart. And so we were, we were actually more successful than we realized um, in keeping the business going. We were just now splitting it between two platforms. Mm-hmm. And for those who, who do Walmart or maybe who don't know, Walmart doesn't have a, an app for the phone but that you could monitor your account on a regular like you do with Amazon. So we were in the habit of checking our Amazon account, but we couldn't do that as often with it Walmart. So we weren't as aware 
I guess, until we started running the reports, you know, on a monthly basis, what we were actually doing, how much we were actually selling on Walmart. And so it kind of, the light bulb went on and we went, okay, we're going to keep the Amazon business going, but we're going to put maybe a little more energy into Walmart. And um, yeah, right now it's, it's pretty close side by side. It's, it's a, a very, very close second to our Amazon sales. And so the two of them combined definitely has brought us a lot further to where we were before before the crash of of 23. So yeah. what we did was we took the our regular product Processes. that we were finding on Amazon mm-hmm. and we duplicated it with Walmart with everything that we did. Okay, if we're selling this on, on Amazon, let's check on Walmart. What's the situation there? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden we found that, wow, <laughs> the majority of things that we were selling on, on Amazon were even selling at a higher price on Walmart, many of them. And maybe not as fast, but there weren't as many people selling them either right. on Walmart. Less competition, less, slightly less competition, competition, less yeah. competition, but but still, nonetheless, significant opportunity. And and many of us in the community are discovering that right now. I mean, on paper, Walmart is still a fraction of Amazon. I think right. you know Amazon is almost half of every transaction online retail in the U.S. You know, sure. high three percent something, and Walmart. And eBay are both like around, I don't know, five, six percent each or something combined, along with a bunch of other websites. They're still not half of what Amazon is. But as a seller, that's a lot of people who are still combing through the listings and, and buying. And a lot of people really love Walmart and, and use it. So yeah, huge opportunity there. We we had our best day ever was here just a couple months ago on Walmart. My mom texted me and like. That was incredible. We did multiple thousands of dollars just kind of using it as like you described earlier, Wendy, the death pile. Like, what are we going to do with this stuff? I can't sell it on Amazon for whatever reason. It, the price doesn't work or, you know, the ASIN's been taken down for whatever reason. So let's just send it to Walmart. And suddenly this very profitable sales, it's a great backup. It's, but I would say it's a better backup plan than eBay at this point, from my perspective, mm-hmm. for our team, for sure. For, for us, it certainly for us is. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Good. Hey, we'll get back to the episode in just a moment, but I want to tell you about today's sponsor. If you are an Amazon seller who has more than just a handful of listings on Amazon, I can almost guarantee you that Amazon owes you money that you don't even know you're owed. There's all kinds of little reimbursements and rebates and refunds that Amazon owes you that unless you're actually going in and tracking them down, you are not getting all the money that you have coming to you. And today's sponsor does that for you. They only get paid if you get paid. And their first $400 of reimbursements are completely free. They don't charge you anything. They just prove that they're good at what they do. They're Amazon approved. They've been doing this a long time. They're a great friend of our community. Many sellers in our community use them. The company is Gitada. And I'm going to give you a link. Write this down. SilentGym.com slash reimburse. That link gets you the special offer that they have for our community. SilentGym.com slash reimburse. Be sure to tell them that I sent you and you will enjoy the benefits of having someone else finding all the money that Amazon owes you. Go check them out now. Let's get back to the episode. I would say it's a better backup plan than eBay at this point, from my perspective, Mm -hmm. for our team, for sure. For for us, it certainly is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So fast forward to the conference of last year, because of some of the struggles, I took the initiative to um, go up to the coaching table. I, and I intended to talk to Matt and he was busy talking to someone else. So while I was waiting, Nathan became available and just, <laughs> sorry, he just was so tender <laughs> and gave us access, you know, to, to contact him directly to work through some of the stuff that we were struggling with. Mm-hmm. And um, from that has come additional, you know, coaching with other coaches and and nuggets, you know, nuggets from each one, little little bits that we've learned that got us through that real really tough time. Nathan has um yeah, just really been great for us as far as his time. He's been generous. That led us actually to a path to 100 ASINs workshop, the first one that that Brian and Robin Joy did. And uh, um, we, I was able to join you guys out there as well. Yeah. Me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you know what? So great. Oftentimes, I think at the conferences, even, you know, we've been doing this six years. And so 
it seems to, at least to us, I'll, I'll speak for myself that I'll say it, it seems like we should know more than we do. I mean, you know, we've been successful with what we've done, but we should, we should be branching out more. We should know more. We should be, you know, more experienced than we are. And we hear these success stories of people and we see them on stage, but it's kind of like being at a Hollywood premiere. It's like, oh, those are the actors. Those are the untouchables. Those are the elites. We're, you know, we're the small fish. And so being at a conference like that, well, first of all, connecting with Nathan and his, you know, seeing his real heart and that he's not just the big wig on the stage and then meeting Robin Joy and, and Brian and connecting with them on a personal level, it's like, okay, we need to reframe how we see all these people that are coaches or that are in the leadership roles yeah, and understand that their desire is to help those of us who are struggling and who need, you know, other avenues of, of income or, or want to pursue other things. And the light, yeah, another light bulb went on that, okay, we need to see them in a different light. And so yeah. we now see them more as equals that they are part of the community that we are part of and they want to help they are eager to help and so all we have to do is ask and that's a really hard thing for someone like myself who is you know blessing and a curse that i'm a confident person um it can come across as cocky or conceited you know the the, the negatives of the world the way they see the confidence that i have mm-hmm. but Sometimes it's a, it's a pride issue too, that, you know, I don't want to bother somebody else with my problems mm-hmm. because they're, they're too important or they're too busy. And so that, that, that was a real awakening. I think this last year in the shift, the mind shift that got us through the end of the year, the Q4, Yeah, it it's was a very positive experience. There. And thank you for being so transparent, speaking from the heart and just a quick observation. You mentioned about Nathan. He's been with me for over 20 years at this point. I fired, I, I sometimes say four other directors, but I think maybe it was just three. It's been 20 years, so bear with me. But <laughs> within just a few weeks, I fired the other three guys because I wanted to start a coaching program, but I had a very different way I wanted to do it. I needed someone of high character, high empathy, mm. and yes, high ability as well. But that was almost a third because you can teach skills and we can learn new, you know, new strategies and those will always be out there. But the, the empathy, the character, and he's just, he's that in spades. You know, yeah. He'll stay on the phone with a client till two in the morning. <laughs> and like, Nate, you can't burn yourself into the ground. We've had to work really just like, hey, you've got to set up some boundaries because he just cares so much. He takes right. it so personally. Uh, a perfect guy to have in charge of a coaching program if you really care about making sure people succeed. And, yeah. and I, so I love that you were able to go right to him and have that conversation and uh, you know, obviously we can't coach tens of thousands of people by spending all day, every day on the phone with them ourselves. But when there is a challenge, we're available and we do work through those. And I have a few calls a month myself with coaching students who just, Hey, I just want to, I'd like to meet with Jim, I you know, on this, that, you know, I, I'm at the point, I love you, my coach, but I want to bounce some stuff off Jim and I'll do those. And we love doing that. But with 60 yeah. coaches, you know, we do kind of spread out the responsibilities <laughs> a good yeah. amount. But yeah, again, just thank you for the transparency, Wendy. That was, yeah. that was, uh, that's a really cool part of, your, part of your story. And I think people will be able to relate to it. It doesn't have to be all, you know, like we said before we hit recording today, it doesn't have to be all sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. That, that's not business. That's not life. Right. That's not marriage. That's not anything worth having. Right? That's not how the world works. Yeah. Transparency and approachability and empathy. Yeah, understanding when things are rough that you need to be surrounded with people who care that's business uh, but you guys are doing some great stuff i mean you've really got a beautiful business and you've done it together right you've got that as well I mean, yeah you've been through together <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i think that's part of why we connected too with with robin joy and, and brian you know at this workshop and yes. really was excited to be there and i guess that showed, you know, that's when they actually approached us about being coaches. Mm -hmm. And it was something that was on the back of our mind for a while, but, um, you know, we, we were waiting for an opportunity and, and then of course that was leading into Q4. And I thought there's no way we can jump into this now and kind of put it on the side. And then in January we revisited and, and reached out to them and said, is this still on the table? And what does this look like? And from there until now we're, you know, we're now officially onboarded. So well, waiting for, we still waiting for our first student, but um right. yeah, we're excited to to give back. That that is something 
that I think has been a pattern in our marriage. This is our second marriage between us. And when we first got married, we went through a lot of education and training and felt like we needed to give back. And so we actually helped to facilitate and teach a remarriage program at our church for years. Oh, that's and so cool. Okay. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Um, and that has really been the cornerstone of our marriage. The fact that we did that work before we got married and then we continued to do it and continue to, to give back to, to what we learned. And so that's how I see the coaching. You know, we have definitely benefited from the coaching program, um, from the community, the conferences and the workshops and meeting people. And, and that's really our desire is to be able to, whatever our story is, good, bad, or ugly, you know, rainbows or unicorns or not to be able to, um, the saying that I love is I never ask for adversity, but I always welcome it because I know that the Lord has a lesson in it that I can then not only grow from, but also hopefully share mm. and maybe touch someone else in their story. Wow. Uh, that's powerful. Through that. Yeah, you just said a mouthful, but there's a formula there that's repeated. You look at all the major recovery programs even out there. Yeah. They're all into the same way. It's like now that you're back to somewhat stable of the footing, you're not, you haven't arrived. The adventure begins because now you're going to help others get yeah. through what you just navigated. <laughs> yeah. Right? What an incredible challenge. Uh, and so you guys, I see that this is that reciprocity of like, okay, this community has helped us through some rough stuff and we're in a decent place now. We like where we are. Let's help others make that journey. I just, I love your heart. That's great. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Well, welcome aboard again. <laughs> we talked before the recording today, but just so the listeners know, I love welcoming. Well, that's one of my favorite parts of my job is welcoming new coaches on the <laughs> team because every one of them has a story. They started off as clueless newbies. They've been through ups and downs and victories and losses and defeats. And now they're on a st place of stability where they say, yeah, I, I think I could help other people take that journey. Yeah, I, I think I'm up for that. They got a teacher's heart. Their business is running at a stable pace and a good place. Yeah, let's help others get to that point too. So congratulations again. Welcome. Welcome to the team. I think you're going to have with the timing of this episode and the fact that you guys are going to Orlando with us in May, you're going to have a good number of people kind of see when to have a conversation with mm -hmm. you. You're going to kind of be, you know, those, you were sitting back and calling them celebrities on stage. <laughs> nice enough. You're like, oh, I didn't know if I should come up and talk to you or not, because like you guys were on the podcast. Ooh, impressive. Right? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? No, we just had a conversation yeah. with Jim and happened to record it. Right. I mean, don't yeah. be intimidated to go to your point, Wendy, that you made earlier. There's no one in this community that sees themselves on a pedestal slightly above everyone else. Uh, I try my I, I do many, as many things as I possibly can to make sure everyone knows that I'm here to ask stupid questions every day. As the leader of the community, I find myself in clueless, lost scenarios constantly. And I think that's mm -hmm. a good sign of a leader is there's different personality types. And I had to battle through this, Wendy, where you mentioned feeling like, I don't want to be the one to ask the dumb questions. Sometimes we think as leaders, we've arrived to the point where we've lost the ability to ask dumb questions. Like I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be the guy with the answers. <laughs> Once you get there, that's a scary place to be because it's very isolating. Yeah. I'd like to say, point out all the time, rarely am I the smartest guy in the room on just about anything. And I'm in the wrong room if I am. I've always got a bunch of silly questions for my team. And like, Jim, really? You don't know? You don't know that? You don't know the answer? <laughs> I like, I think I probably used to at some point, but it, like if I had to prep a shipment right now, my 21-year-old son who does better job for me than anyone in the warehouse every day for us, He'd laugh at me. He's like, Dad, no, what are you doing? <laughs> when I go help, I'm like in the way. Right? Yeah. And, and even on the stuff that I am supposed to have a good grasp on, um, I forget all the time, little details and things. And that's just life, man. We're doing this together. Um, but we're on a beautiful program. The opportunity is very legitimate. And it's been proven time and time and time again. We know if we do this together, we tackle it together. There's beautiful rewards in it for all of us. Uh, and and I, we just want to resonate that message. We're not perfect people who have achieved some high level of, you know, look at us in awe. No, it's, we want this for as many people who want it for themselves as well. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help teach and learn together every day. It's a community. So I, I love that you've kind of made that jump now. You're going to get to experience people walking up to you going, wow, podcast, you're like, it's really no big deal. Put in the work, you know, we're here to help. So yeah. That's beautiful. Well, what thoughts come to mind as I'm seeing those things or what else of your story would, would you guys like to share? Maybe some tips or strategies or, or fill us in on how things are going now with more specifics, like what are you selling and how's it going? 
Uh, is it still just the two of you? Go anywhere with any of that. It is still just the two of us. We're we're working through the, you know, hiring of someone and getting back into potentially a VA. And I think the the shift this last year was definitely the Walmart thing. Mm-hmm. I think the the key component from 2020 that we kept was uh, merchant fulfillment. You know, we do mostly FBA and and we that is our focus the majority of the year, but like Q4 and we you know we shared this with our mastermind group over and over if you if you don't use merchant fulfillment any other time of year q4 is a time to to have it nailed down we often will find a product at the last minute early december this year it was actually mid december and i wrote i wrote the numbers down cuz i thought this was pretty incredible a 3 day period we <laughs> found a product it was i think the 15th or 16th of december and we knew we had a window of maybe five or six days, even with expediting, to get it before Christmas. But we knew it sold last year. And so we went all in and we bought the product. We bought, I don't know, several hundred of them. And we sold over 300 items in three days of this one item. <laughs> and, and we would not have been able to them. We would not have been able to do that if we if we weren't already proficient in in merchant fulfillment. Mm-hmm. And so we were set up and and leveraged to be able to do that and that you know that, that was obviously a huge boost for our sales on both on both platforms. Right. And so we emphasize that to our mastermind group. Learn merchant fulfillment. If you do one item throughout the year, you know, and only do that one item, do something so you learn the postage, you know, the costs, um the weights, um, the sizes of of products, and then obviously boxing. You know, you got to have multitudes of boxes and packaging materials and all that. And so, COVID definitely thrusted us into that. Um, we had to pivot because we were ninety five percent FBA then, mm-hmm. and we try try to stay that way throughout the year. But Q four, we're definitely um, we're geared up for merchant. So I I encourage any, anybody and everybody in the business to at least learn how to do that, even if you don't do it on a regular. Yeah, that was That's when we found thing. that product this when we found that product this year at right in the middle of December, we needed to get enough to sell because we knew it was it, well, the potential was there. So I literally left Idaho, went to a couple other states and went to all the stores in those states that were selling that particular product that I could that we could find and, um, you know, and b- bought them out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And what was your profit per unit? What was your net? The item costs $20. We were, we were making about $10, 10 to $12 per item. Yeah. yeah. And, and, we did, and we did three, over 300 in three days. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I love and it. So the beauty of it too, is because it was so close to Christmas, I'd say 10% of that was expedited. And so we were, you know, making a little extra on the expedited shipping okay. costs. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then we, you know, we had several, we probably had another hundred and, 5,200 after Christmas that we sent in to FBA because it was, you know, a time that we could do that. And, and, um, continued to sell. Yeah. And they've continued to sell and, and we're just, we're just about out of them. (laughs) Right. So, right. Well, yeah. yeah. It being able to having the skill set to find those, to capitalize on the opportunities, having a system that you're constantly finding new test worthy winning ASINs like that. Yeah. You guys are, uh, you guys have been on quite a journey and, and, but you've got some significant skills at this point that you can go in many different directions from here. Well, I'm, I'm loving your yeah. story. Well, what are the lessons you guys have for the listeners, for uh, for anyone who's maybe this is the first episode of our podcast they've ever heard? You know, like uh, talk to talk to some folks out there who are listening to the show today. Just what you know now that you're coaches, like what are some of the big lessons you guys have learned? A couple of quotes actually that I found last night I thought were really applicable. One of them is some of the worst people in the Bible made the most positive impact. Mm -hmm. Why? Because their story didn't end with their mistakes. It Mm -hmm. finished with their comeback. You might feel like you're defeated, but your story isn't over. Your victory is coming. And I just thought, yeah, that kind of defines this last year. You know, we, we muscled our way through the most difficult times. Um, we did it with community, mm-hmm. thankfully with our mastermind group and our coach. And, um, we, we found a way to sift through the rubble and get to the other side. And our business still isn't where we'd like it to be ultimately. But, um, I think again, that was a learning opportunity, you know, with, with each challenge, with, with each trial, it's a learning opportunity. 
And hopefully we can share that with others. And then one of the last ones was, I saw this actually, I'm not sure who posted this, but it was on Facebook last night and it had the the acronym FEAR, you know, F-E-A-R. It could mean one of two things, forget everything and run (laughs) or face everything and rise by Zig Ziglar. And again, that to me just exemplifies, I think this last year is, although it was painful and difficult, you know, in this last year to, to face some of those things, we faced it, we fought through it. And I think we've risen to the other side that now we can share some of that, you know, with others and hopefully help them through their, their struggles and, and through their successes, you know, hopefully we can be part of that as well. Yeah. It, it, there is a, there is a, almost a inhale, exhale to business. It's like a, you know, you rise, you fall, you, you think a little, you swim (laughs) and you learn each step. No one has a perfect trajectory up and to the right. It just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. And the lessons you learn while things are a little rough, uh, the benefits that you get, you know, we were talking before we hit record today that, uh, the, the quote I heard just a couple of days ago, listening to a podcast was never trust a leader who doesn't have a limp, <laughs> mm. you know, just the lessons of it, it, after you've been through a few cycles and you realize, okay, after I sink, if I persist, I'll swim again. And you've learned new things and you're closer to the people who took the journey with you and the opportunities that arise from that cycle, you go a little higher each time. And that's the reality for a lot of people. We do have the students in our community who just seem to just go all in and ramp up and they're just, you know, $100,000 month three. And like, what are you doing? Well, they just, you know, they hit it, took it serious, went all in, found some great stuff and there they go. But some stories, they take time to develop and it's the season of life and it's the other situations that, that, that you're navigating, you know, life doesn't just hand us uh, you know, an easy path. And so I, I love doing episodes like this where, Hey, very real people, very real struggles, but look at the trajectory, look what they've accomplished, look where they are. And uh, I'm very proud to have you guys on the team and I'm proud of what you've accomplished. And hopefully you guys are, are proud of where you're at as well, because it, it's significant. A lot of people would do anything to not have to go to separate jobs every day and be away from each other. Oh yeah. Fraction of what you guys are earning at this point. Right. And not even getting to see their spouse or their family. And you guys have done this together and you've built a a viable, very beautiful business. So well done. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's easier now to see, you know, yeah, we've been doing this six years. We don't have to be at the level that, like you just said, somebody who, you know, jumps in three months later, they're doing a million dollars or it's okay. It's okay where we're at. And, you know, as long as we're paying our bills and we're where we need to be, that's that's okay and, and that's a story in and of itself and um so thank you for this community thank you for building the team you have and that we are honored to be part of that and hopefully can share that with others who who, who need that message so yeah well it, yeah. the, the honor is mine as well it, it truly is every single one of the the coaches and the, the coaching students you know the people that i have a chance to interact with they've got their stories it's just an overwhelming number of stories at times you know that that's the the vantage point that I have, I find myself more fascinated by the stories and the people and the individuals. And if I could just sit on the phone every day and get on Zoom calls and just, you know, yeah, let's talk business. I know the systems we teach work, but what is it that's going on in your life that's kind of resisting? Everyone's got that story. You know, I'm taking care of my sick mom and I've only got a few hours or like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a single mom now. I never expected that to happen, but here I am. And like, I don't want to be away from these beautiful kids. I want to homeschool and make money, like and like the motivation, the the circumstances surrounding these challenges, and then finding a creative way to navigate that and use the internet creatively to solve the problem of I don't want to have to leave home every day and not be here for fill in the blank, right? That's the common that I want to be with my spouse. I want to do this with my kids. I want to be here for my sick parents. I want to. I can't do the nine to five anymore. I can't do sixty hours a week. I mm-hmm. got to find another way. And helping people solve that, there's something so rewarding. Yeah. People navigate that. Um, and and you guys are just the latest example. You know, maybe six yeah, years. We feel tremendously blessed to be able to yeah. to work, you know, on our own schedule to work from home. Yeah. Yeah. Be our own bosses. Such mm-hmm. a blessing. I, I don't know how people do it the other way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. I still wake up grateful every day. Yeah. I didn't have to get up at 
five in the morning and leave my family till seven tonight. You know, I, my last jobs were that way. And now you just get up at five in the morning to go play basketball before. <laughs> I don't get up at five in the morning for anything, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, there's the flexibility and it, it's allowed me, it just, it's allowed us to, you know, just have a better lifestyle and it's just yeah. it's a blessing. So, yeah. well, God bless you guys. Any, anything else that was on your mind before we started to wrap this one up? I think it's been a really good conversation, a great episode. I think it's going to encourage a lot of people, but I don't want to cut you off before we've dove into anything else that you had on your mind. We got involved in mind groups with other people, and that has been uh, huge for us during the difficult times, having the, the others that were there to encourage us. One of them that was a part of our group was working on branded bundles as we were had been trying doing as well and really struggling getting it off the ground. And so we talked to them and they came out from another state, stayed with us over a weekend. And the two, you know, two couples got together, sat around the table and just collaborated, collaborated and tried to work together to try to help each other out. And that was that was great. And now they just recently launched their first bundle and they're doing great with it. It did. It, it's taken off. And so we're really so happy about that, that they've, they've been able to do that. So excited. Yeah. 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 Great example. Great story. Collaborating community. Don't try to do this alone. I love that we see our community through an abundance lens, meaning there's plenty of success for all of us. We're not competitors sitting around trying to, you know, snipe ideas from someone else without getting caught. We're sharing the idea. <laughs> right. Hey, right. Okay. Here's what we're doing. Right. It's a very public business. Uh, and, and we love sharing the opportunities with uh, with others. So yeah, if you're not doing community, I think that's a big theme today. If you're not doing this with intentionality, community, it may be that a coach or a mastermind group that you set up on your own, or you need other people in the picture. And as they win, it raises the tide for all of us. People yeah. Learn and the opportunities and the doors that it opens. So well done. Well, it's great hanging out with you guys today. I've got another episode back to back today. So I do need to start wrapping this one up, but it was great. <laughs> to see you guys. Going to see you in Orlando. We didn't talk yep. much about that, but you guys are coming to Orlando. So look for Wendy and Kip yes. in Orlando, May 25th, yeah. 25th at the Proven Conference. There'll be a link in the show notes. Um, and we just announced scholarships today too. I don't know if you guys knew this, but for the listeners' sake, if the money's tight and you still want to come, we've got some very generous sponsors this year who've created a nice pool of funds for mm. people who are looking at it going, ah, I'm not sure if we can justify it. Well, hey, the admission is on us. Um, yeah, come anyway. We're going to cover that and we want you to experience this community. There's details on the website, theprovenconference.com has details on that. So we'd love to bless you with that uh, because we're blessed. We're only blessed for one reason, to be a blessing to others. And that's what we love right. to hear. So, all right. Well, I love your hearts, guys. Good hanging out with you today, Kip and Wendy. We'll see you in Orlando here in just a few weeks as this episode comes out. And uh, Yeah, we'll right. And we Thanks, Jim. Right. God bless you all. Mm-hmm. Thanks. And to all the listeners today who hung out with us, if this was your first episode, I got to let you know that we have hundreds of interview episodes at this point where we've talked to the real students of the Proven Amazon course who have built beautiful businesses. Come hang out with us on our 75,000 member Facebook group too. That's completely free. You can go to silentgym.com for details on all that. And we'll have another great episode for you again very soon. We'll talk to you then. 